Amber. Shake of a hand or a fist bump. She's known as Amber, and they've been given the green light to get underway. Well, Don't give me that look, Carl. If you keep coming out with puns like that, I think you need a red card. Mm. Not sure that one works. Won a big ladies title, middle of the year, beating Alison Fisher in the final. Well, certainly got plenty of action there, spread the balls nicely, but nothing down. Just in the distance, I can see Skylar Woodward is back at the table. So that opportunity that Maurice Newhausen had, he clearly didn't take. Alvin Ocean has pulled one back. The European Open champion now trails 8-5 against Si Cha Chen. Also, Darren Appleton was 4-2 down against Gomez, Roberto Gomez. He now leads 6-4. Those matches all in winner's qualification, but ultimately it all amounts to the same thing. Win your match, and you'll be back tomorrow for the final 64. Carlo Biado will shortly turn 39 years of age from the Philippines. Won the two biggest individual titles in the game. World champion back in 2017. And of course, the champion here at the US Open 12 months ago. Yeah, rightfully so. He's on center stage. He's in loser's qualification round. So we're back up to a race to nine, not a race to eight. So basically it's race to nine throughout the event, but once you go over to the left side or the loser's side, it's a race to eight. But when it's a bigger match like this, the loser's qualification, we put it back up to nine. Bad shot here. I think he's hooked himself. He's going to have to get the short stick out. Judgment Day here at the 45th US Open Nine Ball Championships in Atlantic City. This man is the defending champion. He's doing all he can to retain that trophy. And the green jacket. Jump shot's easy, getting on the six isn't. Tried to draw the cue ball back and just look where it's finished. Good luck with this one, buddy. Sent to the one last side last year. Of course, it was a different format then, only 16 in single elimination. He did have three wins against Steve Fleming, Vincent Beauravage, and then Mika Imminen, who he beat 11-1. Then lost to David Alcady when he was two wins away from going straight through to single elimination. Through the loser side of the draw, beats Daniel Schneider, Jeffrey De Luna, and then the former champion Jason Shaw. So did make it to the final 16 after all. Back in the present day, great chance for the underdog here. Oh, well, that's pulled up a little earlier than she might have hoped. Test of queuing now for Amber. You've got to stay still, and she does stay still. She was out playing in the ladies event in Singapore three or four weeks ago when I was out there and had the pleasure of watching and I thought, I'm curious, watch the head. Any amateur pool players out there, take note, stay still and you'll pot them balls as well. In any cue sport, that's 
the first good habit you have to get into, isn't it? Keep the head still, because so many people, when they start playing, whether it's snooker, pool, whatever it is, they don't get that habit from the start, and they're never able to get it after that. Slots them two balls home like they're over the pocket. Damba Chen, she's going to steal the first rack. Well, up against the defending champion on one of the main tables at the US Open. She looks very comfortable with the situation and leads 1-0. Roland Garcia still on the hill, 8-6 in front against Mario He. It's just gone 8-7. Victor Zielinski is through. He's beaten Daniel Massiol, 9-7. So that's another player through on the winner's side. And Nuyuki Oi is a winner as well. Reached the semis last year, 9-3 winner over the former World Masters champion, Karol Skowerski, today. So only... Five places left to be decided now on the winner's side. Si Cha Chen is well placed to be perhaps the next of them. Leading Alban Ocean, as we've said, 8-5. It's 7-all now between Oscar Dominguez and Sanyan Pelovanovic. Garcia, we've told you about, 8-7 up on he. Darren Appleton, as we were saying, leading Roberto Gomez, 6-4. That one hasn't changed. And the former world champion, Niels Fyen, is 5-3 up on this year's World Masters finalist, Loho Sum. Dominguez battle in his heart out, wants to make that US Moscone Cup team. Amber Chen struggled on the first break and she struggled on the second break. I think she just needs to imply a little bit of more spin on the cue ball. She breaks with enough power though. Seems to start the cue ball from a long way back. While well, she positions it. What was the general standard like of that ladies' event that you witnessed in Singapore, Carl? Yeah, it was very strong. It was good to see some new faces, even new faces in the, the, the men's event as well. Obviously, there's faces that we're used to seeing, but it's just good to see new players from all over the world. Vietnam took a big collection of players there. There's about 20 players there. Some I've never seen. And Really enjoyed it out there. They love the pool out there as well. It's such a global game, Michael. That's what people don't realise. Well, look at that. The one tickling in. And she's fallen nicely on the two. When you come to one of these massive field pool events, it's a bit like when you're at one of the Grand Slam tennis tournaments. You look at the draw and it feels like every corner of the world practically is represented. And there are even countries that you don't think of any tradition in the game, and then suddenly they produce someone who, OK, might not necessarily be a world beater straight away, but is capable of competing. And you talk about the Q sports. I guess the two biggest around the world, pool and snooker. Pool is absolutely light years ahead when it comes to global reach. Accessibility is a big part of that. Go to all corners of the world. There are pool tables to play on, easily available. Alban Ocean, the European Open champion, has been sent to the one loss side. Si Cha Chen has closed it out at nine racks to five. Sanjin is the first player on the hill in that big battle. Between himself and Oscar Dominguez, 8 7 to Sanjin. Mario, he just trails by one. He's 8 7 down to Garcia. Amber Chen is looking good. He needs a good shot here, though. Coping he, he would just float the cue ball two rails, leave the cue ball in the centre of the table, and take a thin cut on the purple five. It's not for Amber. She's trying to come round the table. This needs to keep going. 
little lesson there for you, Amber. Take what the table gives you. Getting good results throughout the year. Quarterfinals of the Women's World 10 ball. Did well in that event in Singapore, as you were saying. Mistake in the opening rack, missed the bank shot there. Not an easy bank shot, Michael, but you're so used to seeing the top play well, I'll take it back. It was easy. I'm surprised he didn't play the cut. I thought he could chop the ball in and swing the cue ball back and forth. Yeah, it just doesn't look settled at all, yes. I would have thought he would be the quicker to settle into the match, but certainly looks to be the other way so far. She's shooting this up into the top right. That offers a bigger pocket. Not that she needs it. Didn't touch a rail. And this isn't going to help Biado to settle one little bit. The fact that his opponent looks full of confidence. America's Billy Thorpe. He's playing loser's qualification. So loser's qualification matches if you lose that match, you're out. If you win, you advance through to the final 64. How this will work is we have 32 players undefeated, 32 players with one loss, and it's quite simple. They will play each other. Yeah, and that's where we'll be tomorrow morning. And then it's basically one round in each session, so two rounds a day, last 64 and 32 tomorrow. Last 16, and then the quarters on Friday, and then it's the semis in the US Open final on Saturday. Also, the juniors kick off tomorrow. We mm. have a junior event here, the SVB Junior Open. to go but the defending champ under early pressure here 2-0 down now there's one place left to be decided in the losers qualification round and it all hinges on one rack Tyrrell Blowers and Reiner Lahr 7 all at the moment yeah losers round 3 to get to losers qualification round yeah so that will be the last place coming through from that round. Play Tim de Reuter. You see scores going through. Matches going on in three different rounds at the moment. Elsewhere in losers qualification, Chris Melling, two racks away, leading Michael Schneider, 7-3. John Morrow with a 5-1 lead over Tolian Han. Back on the winner's side, Sanjin Pelovanovic, as we were saying, 8-7 in front of Oscar Dominguez. Also 8-7 to Roland Garcia against Mario He. Darren Appleton, 
Now 6-5 in front against Roberto Gomez, who had lost four in a row, but he's won rack 11. And Niels Fyon looking good at 7-3 in front against Loho Sum. Back here, it's the first time that Chen Cha Hua hasn't come up dry from the break. Oh, you can't miss those. If you're going to try and knock out the defending champion and you give yourself a chance like that, you cannot afford the luxury of missing those shots. Here it is again. Yeah, there's a bit of distance, but look how far away she was from making it. One way of getting yourself out of trouble, but where is he on the two? Body language wasn't a good reaction. Yeah, it doesn't look to me that he can pop this ball. If he can see the left edge, he could play a two-way cross bank. Got to avoid double hitting the cue ball on the two. I think that's what he's playing. Element of safety in this as well. Yeah, that's what he's playing. Is it too fat though? He's out of sorts here. Oh, look at the roll he's had here. Look at the roll he's had here. Things like that are out of your control, and that is just the nature of pool. That will never change. Give him a bucket of 100 cue balls and ask him to play that again. Find that gap between the five and the nine. Rather than running into one of them and leaving the two on, Well, that's unfortunate. She did catch the two. Sometimes when players play challenge matches over the years, they can sometimes play a call shot game. So what happens usually is you would have to call the shot you're playing. So if you're going for a pot and you miss the pot, the, the very next shot, Michael, the player could have the option of putting you back in or playing the shot. And if that was the case there, Biardo would have been playing that hook snooker and not Amber. And the number of times over the years I've been playing matches where someone has just suddenly decided they want to have shots being called and pockets being picked right in the middle of a match. And of course at a much lower level, the things people try to do at club level. Drama on table four, that was the match that always looked like it was going to go hill hill. Oscar Sanjin, 8-8, eight, eight. winner's qualification. Yeah, Pelovanovic at the table in that deciding rack. It's also level between Darren Appleton and Roberto Gomez. That's a match that's at big swings one way and the other. This is what's happening in these multi-table events now, these two, five, six matches. The opening day, we see a lot of donuts and nine ones. And then come these winner's qualification matches, Things change, the matches get tighter, the crowds start gathering over certain tables. This is the beauty of coming to one of these events as a fan. It's a bit like golf. You can just walk around, go up to a table. One match finishes hill, hill, and then word gets spread around that there's another hill, hill match. Everyone crowds over to the other side, and you can literally go through all the little channels in the arena and Get where you want. Have you been out in the arena, Michael? Oh, yeah, I've been down there and joined in with the crowds for a number of the matches without watching Joshua Filler earlier. I was there for the finish of that remarkable Van Boning Tate match yesterday. And the thing about it is, if you want to go to a golf tournament and see a lot of players, as you said, you've got to do an awful lot of walking around. At a pool tournament, it's all there in one hall, a big hall, albeit, but you can see so many big names. Just a great buzz about it. Obiado certainly wasn't buzzing early on in this match. And his opponent 
Really had such a bad miss on that two early in the rack. And through one thing and another, Carlo Beato has ended up winning it and closing to 2 1 behind. Dominguez now at the table in that final rack against Pelovanovic, who's sitting in his chair with his head in his hands. I don't want to speak too loud because they're very close to us here. Underlining the point I was making about proximity of all the tables. So that one's 8 all. Roland Garcia, 8 7 up on Mario He. Roberto Gomez now in front again against Darren Appleton. He's won three in a row to go 7 6 up. Neil's fine also at 7 against Loho Sum, who is 3. Still no result from Tyrrell Blowers and Reiner Lars. I said just one more place in loser's qualification to be decided. That one is 7 all. And in the loser's qualification round, Chris Melling on the hill, 7-3 against Michael Schneider. Johan Chua, who we've seen a lot of on the main tables this week, also leading 7-3 over Tony Robles. Imran Majid is involved today. There were inaccurate reports that he'd actually been knocked out yesterday. But he did get through, and he's still there. Two all against Robbie Capito. And after his narrow defeat to Alex Pagalion, Ralph Suke, the champion of 20 years ago, is quickly back into action against Norway's Emil Andre Gangflut. Beato, 2 1 down. Both players struggling with a break here when it matters. Mario He has won the 16th rack to go 8 all against Roland Garcia. earlier some of the good finishes she's had recently and as you alluded to earlier Carl she uh, won a big event in Calgary in Canada back in August with Alison Fisher in the final he did the cue ball out a little bit more that would have made life easier because She's got to get this cue ball moving from the left back over to the right. Got to be careful of left centre pocket. That can soon swallow this cue ball up. Sanyan Pelovanovic is back at the table in the deciding rack against Oscar Dominguez. Five balls away from going through. Awkward. Amber's going to get the rest out of the way or the bridge. We call it the rest across the pond. I know it's the bridge in the States. Got to get it moving now. Cue ball can hit it and that will be a foul. Oh, she's done well here. She's forgot about the cue ball. It's gone back up table, so she needs another good recovery shot here. Sanjin Perlovanovic is at the table. You've been keeping you posted on that match. It's Hill Hill. Yeah, and nothing's changed actually since the last time I mentioned it. He's taken a really long time over this next shot. He's had that style about him. Very unhurried. Oh, she's butchered that one a bit. You said, Carl, it was another test for her. Now it's a chance for Beato to get level. Oh, 
my word. I know this is not the match we're watching, but Sanjin Perlovanovic is playing just to the left. He's just missed a six ball, which I cannot believe how far he missed it by Michael. You'd have got closer. I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because I did have a little knock earlier today and I was really disappointed you weren't there to see it. I was very pleasantly surprised if not hit a ball for a while, but managed to find some of the old magic. You brought your cue. Now they have cues outside in the hall. Almost had a golden break. Anyway, we'll talk about that later. Big things going on here. I have to say, I'm not overly surprised Pelovanovic missed that ball. He was taking an eternity over his shots. Getting inside his own head. Cue ball needs to stop behind the eight. And it has. I don't think Carlo can go rail first. And because of the seven, how do you jump over the eight? This is nasty. Roberto Gomez on the hill now, having lost four racks in a row, he's won the next four and leads Darren Appleton, 8-6. To say Dominguez over on table four doesn't look to be in any hurry. Play that six that Pelovanovic has just missed. I have to keep it down to a whisper when I'm talking about that match. It's very close to us. fortune there that six looked like it was going to finish up over the side pocket this doesn't offer much but I'm but same again we had to go all out attack safety's nasty as well oh she's played the cut that is cheeky it's very cheeky Roberto Gomez is on the hill. He leads Darren Appleton, former two-time champ, 8-6. Garcia Mario He, 8-8. Eight, eight. Dominguez, 8. Sanji, 8. Action all over the room. We've got four matches going on at the moment in winner's qualification round. And five players on the hill. Good shot there from the defending champ. Maybe that is what he needs to spark some sort of performance here because it's been sluggish to say the least. Oscar Dominguez has just played a very nice shot. I know you can't see that, but I'll try and update you. Got two balls left to beat Sanjin. Just like Carlo. These two balls to tie the match up 2 2. Well, a lot of people might have looked at this and thought, well, that's going to be straightforward for Beato. It's been anything but so far. He was 2 0 down in this match, but he's levelled at 2 all. Reiner Lahr of Estonia has claimed the last place in losers qualification round. He won that hill hill finish against Tyrrell Blowers. And in losers qualification, Chris Melling 8 4 up on Michael Schneider. I think I may have said earlier, not sure, that Melling was on the hill. Of course, it is race to nine now, not eight as it was earlier in the matches on the losers' side. Oscar Dominguez has potted the eight and is looking anxiously to see where the cue ball is going to finish and I think he's going to be quite happy with it. 
I think he's going to have a routine nine. In fact, he isn't even going to have to pot it because Sanyan Pelovanovic has come forward to offer his hand. Had the opportunity in that deciding rack. But it wasn't to be. And that's a really big win for Dominguez in so many ways. Remember, he is number one at the moment in the race for those two remaining automatic spots on the US Moscone Cup team. Every win is a huge step towards clinching a place. So he is through. Yeah, that's right, Michael. This is not just the the US Open and arguably the biggest tournament in nine ball pool alongside the World Nine Ball Championships, of course, but this is just very historic. After the US Open, we always know three players in both teams, so two more places are up for grabs for USA and Europe. So there's a lot at stake this week. Yeah, Dominguez has played Moscone before, of course, but been absent from the team for some years. Lee Van Corteza is playing losers qualification. 1-1 one, one against Steven. Well, I've not really spoken much about Lee Van this week. He's going under the radar. Roberto Gomez is through. 9-6 winner over Darren Appleton. So he won five racks in a row to finish that one off. going to be three on the bounce for Beato. It was a real struggle for him to get from 2-0 down to level at 2-all. That was a good bit more straightforward. He leads for the first time in the match. OK, so only two more places now to be decided from the winner's side. That hill-hill finish between Roland Garcia and Mario He still going on. Niels Fyan inching towards victory. He leads Loho Sum 7-4. Mario He has just beaten Roland Garcia. And that just leaves the Fion and Loho Sum match to finish there. And then all our attention will be focused on the loser's side. Losers round three now complete. So losers qualification, that's the round this is in. Dennis Grabe, 5-3 up on Joe Spence. Chris Melling on the hill at 8-4 against Michael Schneider. Neshko Fortunski. Trailing 3-2 to Wu Kun Lin. Johan Chua needs two more. 7-4 in front of Tony Robles. Three all in a clash of the generations between Imran Majid and Robbie Capito. And Pius Labutas of Lithuania has a 3-0 lead over Nicolas de Leon. And one more score got to give you. Billy Thorpe is 5-0 down to Jan Uski of Finland, who's been steadily enhancing his reputation throughout this year. Dry break from Biardo. He has been struggling with this shot in this match. Number 10, well, the nine ball's lurking over the pocket, but it doesn't look like there's an early combo up until the seven ball. And if she can get good position on the blue too, she has a real good chance of getting to that seven ball. I'm going to ask you a question that I'd be very, a bit surprised if you know the answer to. Why is she known as Amber? Because her uh, favourite colour is orange. A valiant effort, Carl, to cover up the fact that you clearly don't know why. Are you going to tell me the answer or just leave it at that? No, I've no idea either. All oh, right. Well, thanks for that. I thought he was going to tell me something <laughs> uh, really useful then. Well, what is not useful is this long shot. It was always going to be difficult just because of the sheer distance just fires it into the rail. If you play that slow, that pocket will swallow it up, but you can't always play it slow because you've got to think of the cue ball. He's got away with one, though, Biado. He's hooked on the two. Well, someone's bound to get on to you on Twitter 
probably done it already to tell you why she's called Amber. Well, they'll do well because I'm not on Twitter. You're not? Nope. Oh, I thought you were on. I know I'm not. I thought you were. Is Jeremy on it? No, I doubt it. I, so I doubt Jeremy's on, on any <laughs> of her social media. Yeah, I was going to say. So that makes us 0 for 4, as they say over here. Oh, look at this for a safety shot. That is lovely. Two rails, kicking at the two. It's hard to see where this can go safe. Well, that's not going to be safe because it's a foul, ball in hand. Just feel like Biardo wins this rack. He's, he's going to relax a little bit and kind of kick on. Yeah, and he needs to because he's looked anything but relaxed so far in the match. Just cruised through first couple of matches on Monday you kick things off on the main table as the defending champion beats Dalibor Nikolin from Serbia 9-1 later in the day had a 9-1 win over Kristina to catch so by around about the middle of Monday he was already through to today's play and got stopped in his tracks by Jovan Bustamante, so that's why he's on the one lost side. did go to the one loss side last year sent there by David Alcady they've been some very good players to get through there were only 16 in single elimination last year here in Atlantic City once he got there he played Alcady again and this time beat him he'll he'll finish as it was in the next round the quarters against Johan Chua and another close finish 11-9 against Noyuki Oi in the semis beating Lucius Yap 13-8 in the final not happy with that shot is Biardo as he slams the chalk on the table I know what you're thinking you're thinking why is he happy with it he's got a dead combo but clearly the six when it goes on to the eight is not straight there you see so he's got to aim just off full ball on the eight which means the six ball is going to come away from that back rail so now he's got to judge where the six goes and the cue ball so there's a bit more involved to this shot than what it looks. What he'll do is he'll try and find the shot to give himself the higher percentage to land on the six. Oh, he's done a good job here, hasn't he? If it slows down. Yeah, well done. Notice how he played the cue ball with topspin. He was getting the cue ball over there as well on that side. Dennis Grabe. He's fired through up over Joe Spence. Not really spoke much about Grabo this week. So he wouldn't say he's come charging back, but steadily he has built a lead. Of two racks, Carlo Biado was 2 0 down. He now leads 4 2. Still keeping an eye on that one remaining match in winner's qualification. Niels Fion, the former world champion, 7-5 in front against Loho Sum. And otherwise, all our focus on losers' qualification. Don Kwok Wang on the hill, 8-3 against Vincent Beauravage. Chris Melling still on the hill at 8-5 against Michael Schneider. Johan Chua also looking for one more, 8-4 in front of Tony Robles. And Billy Thorpe now 6-0 down. Janiuski. So it looks as though Carl Billy's hopes of claiming an automatic Moscone place could be coming to an end. Yeah, as it stands, Dominguez and Wolford are the only two Americans to advance through to the final 64. I know Jovan Bustamante's got an American flag, but 
He's actually Filipino. He's lived in America a long time, but I don't think he's eligible for the team just yet. I think he's trying to get citizenship for the future, so we'll see how that pans out. Yeah, so as it stands, just two Americans are through to the last 64. But there's plenty of Americans playing losers qualification, Michael, isn't there? Hunter Lombardo. He's there, Tony Robles, but it looks like he's about to lose. Ty Tyler Steyer, Chris Reinhold, Billy Thorpe. Nicholas De Leon as well, although he's 3-0 down. De Leon at the moment in fifth place, if you include Van Boning, who's already qualified in that US Moscone race. But all these Americans, they've still got a very realistic chance most of them would probably need a run to at least the semi-finals to make the team. He could pop the two ball. So that was handy indeed. And look at the cue ball position. Carlo Biardo is definitely in the top eight plays in the world for cue ball control. That's going to make your life a lot easier. Well, it's great to see him involved again. I know he's had issues with his status that have made it difficult for him to travel to tournaments. But great to see him here on a big stage. Michael Schneider hanging on, 8-6 now. The Swiss player trails Chris Melling. Open last year, completed a double of the two biggest individual titles in pool, indisputably, having been world champion back in 2017. Beat Roland Garcia comfortably in the final and almost won it again the following year. Joshua Filler beat him. Sum is hanging on in there. It's now 7 6 against Niels Fine. Yeah, he was certainly, I think, at least 7 3 behind there. And it's gradually turning into a bit of a procession here. That's five on the bounce now for Beato. He's more than halfway to victory and putting that surprise defeat earlier today right behind him. Duong Kwok Huang has finished it off, beating Vincent Beauravage of Canada. 9-3. So advancing from loser's qualification into the last 64. Remember, there will be a draw. The 32 winners will each be placed against one of the players who comes through on the loser's side. Janioski now 7-0 up on Billy Thorpe. Mickey Krause hanging in there, 3-2 now. He trails against Alex Kazakis. Over on table two. And Mark Boisterbosch right in front of us here has built a 6-1 lead over Ronald Regley. Wong Kwok Huang, first player through from the loser side of the draw. You've been out to the Philippines 
Carl, why is the game so massive there? Yeah, I just I don't really know exactly why. I just maybe it's because it's the only Q sport over there. You know, obviously in Great Britain we've got snooker, American pool, and English eight ball. So it's always going to be difficult to catch everyone's attention on one chosen Q sport over there. It's just it's just this version of Q sports. Would it be fair to say it's bigger in the Philippines in terms of its status among? The other sports than any other country in the world yeah i would definitely say that if you look at efren reyes the, the god over there i think you know he's done commercials over there with top brands still doing them and you know i've been over there and i was told if you mention efren reyes in taxis and restaurants and bars everyone knows who he is so we put it to the test one night and that was very true indeed everyone knew who Ephraim Reyes was and that's not really the case anywhere else in the world I've found the opposite of that actually as an Irishman when I've been in other countries and taxi drivers find out where I'm from their face lights up and they say Roy Keane you mean they don't say Michael McMullen well, they probably say that when Roy Keane gets in a taxi Could be taxi for Amber quite soon because it looks as though it's going to be half a dozen racks on the bounce for Carlo Beato. This is kind of what we've been waiting for, no disrespect to Amber Chen, but you always felt like Biado was going to be a big favourite in this match. And at long last he's finally found some kind of spark. Yeah, he looks a completely different player now. He was fidgety and frustrated and really struggling with his game early on. Even when he started winning racks, that was still the case. But now it's all going much more smoothly and he's just three racks away from claiming his place in the single elimination stage. Just that one match still going on. Winner's qualification. Niels Fyans seven six up on low host sum. Michael Schneider is making it tough for Chris Melling. The Englishman still needs one more. It's eight seven there. But Johan Chua has won. He's beaten Tony Robles nine five. So he becomes the second player through. Imran Majid's now five three ahead of Robbie Capito. The man recently turned 50. Ralph Suke, champion of 20 years ago, two all against Emil Andre Gangflut. And Billy Thorpe is one rack away from going out on a whitewash. Trails Janioski 8 0. Again, a bad break from Biardo. No balls. Cue ball is going a little low off that side rail. Here we see again. Yeah, you see how it just goes below that centre diamond. A lot of the times when that happens, it ends up being a bit of a messy rack. Another player whose travel opportunities have been limited in recent years to get out and play in international tournaments with the whole COVID situation. So really prior to this year, she hadn't 
really come to our attention much for a while. Was third in the All Japan Women's Championship back in 2019. Pre-COVID. Quarter finalist in the Women's World Nine Ball Championship a few years back. So she's been around a while. I she's think Carl, sorry, you go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say she's going airborne, but it was not an easy shot. The point I was going to make just there was that such a debate going on more than ever now in terms of the place of women in different sports and you know there are some sports where they've been given a helping hand and perhaps given opportunities that might not be given to men at the same level and people say it's important to develop the game and the debate rages on but I think in pool it's pretty much sorted and ideal and you look at this it's an open event the women enter, they pay their fee the same as everyone else, they come here, they win matches, they take on the best players, so there's no discussion about it because everyone's just being treated the same and it's not quite unique to pool but it's certainly rare for a sport to be in such a comfortable position over these matters. Yeah, well I interviewed Emily about an hour ago from my, my YouTube channel and one of the things I said to her is when she's walking around as a, as a promoter and a new promoter really in big table, you know, um, multi-table events, 256 players. This event, when you look at it, we had the best male players. We had amateur male players. We had female players. We had Henrik Larsson, world champion wheelchair player. And we had juniors, 14 years of age. I mean, that is unique. Yeah, that's Emily Fraser, of course, the managing director, matching multi-sport been so responsible for the huge expansion of the global nine ball schedule over the last few years with plans for more to come of course and everything you're saying there Carl is right but nobody's been making any drive to make it that way it's just the way it's it's developed which says so much about pool and the pool scene and the nature of these open events all these different types of players have come in and played Chris has got the job done. Chris Melling, 9-7 winner over Michael Schneider. So three players now through from losers qualification. And Niels Fyen is on the brink of being the last player to advance from winners qualification on the hill at 8-6 now against Loho Sum, one of the breakout stars of 2022. see the potting angle could he you could clearly see oh delightful safety shot though as though all the belief she was showing earlier in the match is just starting to drain out of her a bit. Shot from Carlo has put him in a good position now to win another rack. This match was tied at 2 2.
tricky shot into the right center here. There you can see clearly goes, no dramas. Looks like the cue ball's gonna crash into the nine, so he needs to think about that as well. Push it forward, maybe. May end up shooting the nine in the top right hand pocket after this shot. He's played it hard. That is the inventive mindset of a Filipino pool player. They do things different. Carlo Biado returned to Atlantic City as one of the favourites to win this US Open and he's starting to play like it. He now leads 7-2. Ko Ping Chung has just won the 11th rack to close to 7-4 down against Lu Ri Teng in loser's qualification. That's certainly one to keep an eye on. And Yanni Uski has handed Billy Thorpe the donut. Donut. It's finished nine racks to nil. So Billy Thorpe is out of the US Open. And so end his chances of claiming an automatic spot on the US Moscone Cup team. Do you think he'll get a pick? Mm, good question. Not so sure. I can see why he would get picked. But at the same time, if... If JJ's got his eye on this event and somebody else goes deep and shows promise, maybe he decides to give them a go. It's a tricky one. Ah, at last Carlo finds the break he's been after. He needs his three ball to keep going because that's the ball he's on. And it has done. It's dressed up nicely over the pocket. Chance to get on the hill here. Biado goes on to win this match. Who will he play? He's going to play someone who's gone through the field undefeated, so it could be a big match coming up in that final 64. Well, this is the thing we've been saying. There are more big names now than there have ever been because there are more big, high-profile events for players to establish themselves in the public consciousness. So really, once we get down to single elimination we're going to see so many big matchups we've seen quite a few of them already think of Woodward and Deluna meeting at a very early stage and more examples fellow Filipino Ivan Corteza He's now five to up over Stephen Holland. He's another player who, if he goes on to advance through the loser's qualification round, some of these winners will want to avoid these two players. That is for sure. It's all about pace, this shot. Oh, it looks good. Looks good. Choice to left centre or top. Well, he's just freewheeling now. All the pressure he was being put under early in the match has become a distant memory really Carlo Biado has taken eight straight racks and is now on the hill. The match, I have to say, fizzling out a bit because it's become a bit of a procession. And he should now clinch his place in the single elimination stage of an event which he won in such impressive fashion last year. Loho Sum will not let go. He's just won the 15th rack. So Niels Fyan is being kept on the hill. It's 8-7 there. That's the last match in winner's qualification. Back on the loser's side. John Mora on the hill now against Tolian Han at 8-3. Hoping Chung 7-5 down to Liu Ri Teng. Imran Majid now has a 6-3 lead over Robbie Capito. Tyler Steyer, who we saw in main table action earlier. 3-2 in front against Sharik Syed of Singapore. Chris Reinhold, two-time Moscone Cup player from the States. 5-3 up on Quo Sanway. 
Daniel Masio has a 4-0 lead over Katsui Turoya. And Mark Boisterball, 7-3 up on Ronald Regley. Good match going on, by the way, between Alex Kazakis and Mickey Krauss on table two. That one is 4 all. Mickey Krause comes under that bracket of, well, if we if we take tier one and call tier one, Biardo, Filler, Ghost, Aldin Ocean, SVB, you know the players who this year have won the events, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, or been there in the finals, you know, the real standout performers, and then you've got another bracket just under them, Mario He, you know, the type of players where They've also knocked on the door, but they've not really won that big event. Mickey Krause comes in that tier three bracket for me. Very talented. Young man working hard at his game. And I think at some point he's going to break through and, and do really well. And O'Neill's fine as working with a lot of the young Danish players. Is, is Does he have a tie-up with Mickey? I think he may have practised with O'Neill's fine. Obviously, he's coming to the sort of last stages of his career, but he's still doing well, obviously. You know, he still competes. But he does a lot of training, Niels. You know, he does a lot of coaching. I think he's got some sort of coaching academy as well. So I think a lot of the pool players around the world like the way Niels goes about his business. So they sign up. said the belief of earlier in the match seemed to have drained away from her a bit but still battling to win every rack she can One good shot here. She should win this rack. And this isn't guaranteed. No problem, obviously, with the six. Tune ball's going to be covering a lot of ground. And this looks pretty good. Doesn't want to get too close to the rail, though. And this is a tester to stay in the US Open. Oh, very calmly done. So having lost eight racks in a row, and the Chen has got one back. Still 8-7 to Niels Fyan, who we were just talking about against Loho Sum. On the winner's side. Chris Reinhold, 5-4 up against Kuo Hassan Wei on the loser's side. And Darren Appleton, straight back into action. It's 3-0 down against Jose Alberto Delgado. He's the young man from Spain who got to the semi-finals of the European Open back in August in Germany. Daniel Masiol, UK Open quarter-finalist this year, 4-0 up on Katsui Turoya. And Nicolas de Leon, another player in that Moscone Cup conversation for the US. Currently fifth in their qualifying table. Leads Pius Labutas, 4-3. He's really turned that round, the Lithuanian started the stronger there. Tyler Steyer looking to bounce back from his thumping by SVB. Has a 4-2 lead over Sharik Syed. And it's 3 all between Ralph Suke and Emil Andre Gangflut. Imran Majid has a 6-3 lead over Robbie Capito. And Mieszko Fertunski could be heading out. Not been the year I think we were expecting from him. And he's got a 7-3 deficit now against Wu Kun Lin. Dennis Grabe on the hill now, 8-4 against Joe Spence. One of the big matches we were talking about earlier today was Oscar Dominguez and Sanyan Pelovanovic. I think we're going to have a look at that now. This is how it all finished. So that's the six that we were talking about that Pelovanovic missed. 
He just was taking such a long time over his shots and seemed to get inside his own head, which is something he's done before. This was the deciding rack. Well, I said he missed it by a mile, and I wasn't joking. That was a horror show. Yeah, Dominguez, there you could see the bit of adrenaline. Almost coming back much too far off the six. And there was real tension surrounding this. They were both taking such a long time over their shots, which I guess when you get to a deciding rack is understandable. Eventually, he gets down, plays the seven. But nothing was coming easy, was it, Carl? No, it never seems to come easy as well. This was a tidy shot, though, and then once the cue ball finishes around that area, he knows he's done enough, and there was a concession. Yeah, big win for Oscar Dominguez, looking to get back in that Moscone Cup team that he's been absent from for some time. And he's got a great chance to clinch his place this week, and even better now that he's made it through to the single elimination stage. It's going to be such a talking point over the next few days, particularly, I think, with the Americans, because it's so tight in their race. Shane Van Bonin already in the team. Joshua Filler has already got his place on the European side. Sanchez Ruiz and Ocean occupying the other two automatic spots at the moment, but a number of players, led by Mario He and Alex Kazakis, a chance to nudge them out of those spots. Yeah, Mario He was 8-5 down in his qualification match and he won so what a big win that was for Mario so back to this one Amber Chen 8-3 down will it be Amber Chen's final break of this year's US Open nine ball championships if it is it's going to be a dry one Biado at the table tricky opener mentioned how big the game is in the Philippines. They've won the World Cup of Pool three times, a joint record along with China. Piado hasn't been part of any of those teams, but he was on the Philippines team with Jeff DeLuna that got to the final in Leicester three years ago and lost to Mario He and Alban Ocean of Austria. On Hill Hill between Loho Sum and Niels Fyan. He's had such a year, Loho Sum, World Masters final. Made a big impact at the World Championship earlier this year. Beaten so many players with big reputations. He's one rack away from beating another one. seems like you're a million miles away but if you can just win two racks and get to 8-6 that 8-6 mark that, you know when you're playing a match and it's 8-6 it's it feels a little bit like hill hill it feels scary three racks is nothing yeah and as much as anything you want to stay out there as long as you can and soak up the experience and as long as you're still out there and nobody's been awarded the win yet, hands have not been shaken. Got to keep believing. She's not going to land on the four ball here though, so it's going to be a safety.
Well, there's some discussion here with John Lehman, the referee. He's just asking him to come and have a look at it. Maybe in case there's any controversy over whether he makes contact with a rail. But no problem from that point of view. safety shot from Amber trying to stay alive in this match in this year's event John Morris on the hill he's playing totally on hand from Singapore Biado has split the balls by a safety. Is he going to try and be a little bit more adventurous? Maybe swing the cue ball around. Swing the cue ball around is tricky. Where's the floor go? It's tricky. He's going to leave the pot. Well, it's going to be tight, even if he has left the pot. You could see the seven and the five ball didn't offer much cover. more good shot and we can get good on the six ball this is pretty much all you can do just keep taking ball by ball rack by rack the old cliche Biado in his chair there. I don't think he'll be getting overly concerned just yet, but at the same time, he'd like to get this done before it gets a chance to get that far. He's going to get it done in this rack now, though. So with the simplest of nine balls, Amber Chen, for the second time in the match, is going to win two racks in a row. Still punching at 8-4. to report from losers qualification round I can tell you it's now seven all between Lu Ri Teng and Ko Ping Chung oh Dennis Grabe has just won he's just beaten Joe Spence 9-4 Wu Kun Lin is on the hill against Mieszko Fortunski at 8-3 five all now between Kuo Hassan Wai and Chris Reinhold Mickey Krause has now edged ahead of Alex Kazakis at 5-4 Mark Beisterbosch on the hill now, leading Ronald Regley, 8-5. If Kazakis was to go out, that would be significant in terms of the Moscone Cup situation. He's currently number five, looking to get into the top three to claim one of the automatic spots. Emil Andre Gangflut is 5 3 up over the former champion Ralph Suke. Back here, 8 4. Amber's made a ball, something we've not seen much of so far in this match. Can she put the two? 
Is there a possible 3-9 combo? The 9 is close to the pocket. It's not really over the pocket. But it's close enough. We were saying earlier about how sometimes the distance between the balls can scare a player off a combination, but a lot of distance there between the 3 and the 9. But I guess when the 9's over the pocket, that doesn't really come into it much. Needs a cue ball to stop. And it has done so. She's not interested in the combo. I don't blame her. All these balls are over the pocket. They've all got clear paths. So why take the risk? Good shot as well. She got a lot out of the cue ball there. Loho Sum has completed the turnaround and beaten Niels Fyen 9 8. He's well behind in that match. So Niels Fyen, that's his name, reluctantly. So the long list of big name scalps that Loho Sum has taken in 2022. 7 3 down, I believe he was in that yeah. match. So Fine will now have to beat Yip Kin Ling Leo if he's to make it through to single elimination tomorrow. It's going to be a tough match. Very talented young players. Yip King. Same as the lady on your screens here. She just goes about business, plodding around the table. Ball after ball. When the balls are all there, Michael. She looks good, doesn't she? She doesn't make mistakes when she's in these positions. Yeah, looks very unfazed. Taking it all in her stride and seems to have a sort of quiet belief in her ability. Can you believe that? It looked like she was going to make it three in a row. She may yet. But she's broken down just as we're talking about her rhythm. And I'm surprised she missed this one. Yeah, right on cue, just though was saying she doesn't really make mistakes in this instance. Tricky shot, this, for Biardo. Cue ball is not that far away from the rail. Fair enough, he doesn't have to go mad with the cue ball. Anywhere on the right-hand side of the table. You'd like to get this up past the middle, but then the pot becomes more difficult because you've got to power the ball. Oh, lovely shot there from Biardo, and that's going to be it, folks. Defending champion, for the second time of asking has made his way through to the final 64 and that is all that matters Carlo Biado will be celebrating his birthday soon on Halloween in fact and he was given a bit of a fright early in this match when he trailed 2-0 there was a late rally from Amber Chen as well but she's finally been seen off Carlo Biado the winner by 9 racks to 4 he will be back tomorrow for the single elimination stage and we'll be back in just a few minutes' time. The action continuing on table one with another match on the loser's side. It's Skylar Woodward against Joshua Roberts.